In today's video, I will be covering how to use NSLOOKUP to execute scripts from DNS text records stored on your website. This is a concept that was introduced to me by a friend on Twitter who will be linked in the description down below. Typically, to download and execute scripts, we would use something like Invoke Web Request or Invoke Expression. But what happens when your target's PC is using PowerShell constraint language which blocks the functionality of these? If you find yourself doing a pen test for a corporation, it's likely they would have had implemented this as a security feature. This is where the NSLOOKUP technique comes into play. You see, when using NSLOOKUP, you're not actually downloading anything. You are simply doing a query and executing that output. In order to utilize this method, you're going to have to have your own website where these text records are stored. For this video, I will be using a domain that I got through GoDaddy. Here on the home page, you can see I have the domain iamjacoby.com. On the right, you can see we have a button that will navigate us over to our DNS text records page. We are going to want to hit filter and select just our text records. This is where we will be storing all of our payloads and we'll be referencing back to this for the rest of the video. I will also be leaving these up after the video is posted so you can do some testing with them before you secure your own domain. So let's go ahead and navigate over to my GitHub page for NSLOOKUP. The link will be in the description. This is going to be the first example of the command we will be looking at. This variation is used to pull down and execute a single DNS text record using a word-based naming convention. Looking at our text records, you can see one of them is named example. This text record holds a simple command to verify the concept works, simply echoing you have successfully executed a command via NSLOOKUP. Now looking at our command, we will call PowerShell and use dot sourcing to execute the output of the following command. We will use NSLOOKUP and specify we are looking at text records. Next, we will use the following syntax, name of the text record dot our domain. If we copy and paste this command into the PowerShell console and run it, you'll see our command echoed out. This is just a simple example to show that it works. Below is one command that will pull down the text record called sub. This particular one will make you automatically subscribe to my YouTube channel. You should try it out. There is one thing to take note of, however. The examples shown so far only work if you run them directly inside of a PowerShell window. If you are wanting to use this command in the run box with something like the rubber ducky, OMG cable, or flipper, there needs to be a minor modification. Our original command will be in quotes and preceded by another PowerShell call. The one major limitation with our previous examples is DNS text records have a 255 character limit, so your payloads would have to stay under that threshold. This led me to create the new variation that allows you to pull down multiple text records and combine them before executing them. In our records, you can see three of them named one, two, and three respectively. This is going to essentially allow us to easily loop through them, combine, and execute them. Let's go ahead and look at the command I wrote to make this possible. First, we will define our range of records to pull down. Our p variable is going to be the container where we store those combined records. Now, for each record, we will use resolve DNS name, which for our purposes is the same as NSLOOKUP, and pass each of those numbers one at a time into our text record name domain syntax, the same as before. We will again specify we are using text records and pipe that into a for each string statement. The strings are just the container holding our text records. Now again, each of those will be added to our p variable. Then finally, we will convert that variable into a script block and execute it. So after copying and pasting that command into PowerShell and running it, our three lines will be echoed into the console window. Now again, like the first example, the syntax for running it in a PowerShell window and run box are different. If you want to use this in the run box, it will need the following modifications. There will need to be a PowerShell call at the beginning, and you'll need to escape the quotation marks with backslashes. If you do that, it'll run just fine. Congratulations, you just learned an advanced technique for executing scripts on a target system. It's not enough to just have a primary plan. You need an alternate, a contingency, and an emergency plan. If you like this video, leave a like. 
To see more content like this, hit subscribe. As always, I am Jacoby. My crime is that of curiosity. And yeah, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. Till next time.